Hey developers, in this video, I'm gonna explain some common conventions and some good tips you should use when creating components inside Vue.js. Hey, and if you're new to this channel, my name is Eric. I'm a full stack software developer. I'm also a big fan of Vue.js, React, and jQuery among others. If you guys like those frameworks, make sure you click that like button and tell me in the description below why I should like jQuery or why you don't like jQuery. Cause you know, I don't think it's that bad. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this view app I have open right here. And I wanna show you what I've seen uh, in a few places. So on the left-hand side, I have a list of components and this is basically a view three app, but this is the same for a view two app. And this, I see a lot of different ways people have named their components and I'm guilty of this at two at times. Let's take a look at some common problems that you might run into. First, if you're familiar with Vue, go ahead and pause this video, take a look at the left-hand side and try to think of some better ways we can name these components. Okay, are you back? All right, so first you should have noticed right away that this my component right here is kind of odd. So typically in Vue.js, we don't actually name our names in this camel case style. There's usually two acceptable ways that we name components. And the first is, well, I'll go ahead and right click on it, is we do it what's called Pascal casing. So if you put the uppercase M and uppercase C, that makes it a, a Pascal case. And that makes a lot more sense. The other way is to actually use kebab casing. And that's where we put a dash in the middle. The reason we do this is because the editors seem to like, to like Pascal casing better than this mixed case. And it also, some file systems have problems with it. The recommendation is always to do either one of these. I tend to always use uh, Pascal casing. It just makes a little more sense to me. Uh, so th that's the first thing I would recommend when you're looking at this. Now, of course, my component is a terrible name for a component. This would not be something you would use in production, but we'll move on from that. One. Let's take a look at these things, these things here. Uh, we have a button here and we have a table here. And another quick tip is that usually if it's something like a presentational type button or a dumb component, something into those terms, then you don't usually want to just call it button or view. Uh, kind of the best practice is that you put a prefix uh, in front of it. So instead of having like button, we should probably put like app button or base button. And that does a couple of things. So let's say we change the name to base button and we change this table name to base table. It puts it first, if you have all your components just in the components folder without any subfolders, it puts them all at the top. So it's much easier to find and it groups them together. So that way you know, oh, this is a base button. I can use it. This is a base table. This makes sense to me. So that way when other developers come into your project, they'll understand that they probably should use the ones that have base in the name. So that would be a, a good idea. Also, I'll show you in a moment, there's a way you can use Webpack to have these base components automatically imported into all your components uh, automatically. It's a really neat feature. I'll show you that in a second. Another thing you may wanna do is there's these ones called footer and header. Now these are part of like the layout of a page. And typically if they're only like a single use version of it, I, I like to do is to rename them to put the in front, the footer and the header. And what that does is it just reminds me that these are basically single use components that you should only use in one place in your app. And you can have some sort of prefix, the is a great way to do it, but it just reminds you this probably shouldn't be imported into a bunch of different components. You probably shouldn't be using the footer in, in several different places or header into several different places. You probably wanna put that into one component and then surround uh, all your different layouts with it. So you might wanna try to use the, the as a good prefix for that. One thing you probably wanna do is look at this to-do to -do list and to-do list button. So this is kind of vague, doesn't make much sense, but what might make more sense is to name it, uh, to name it with more specificity. So every single name gets a little bit more specific. So you have to-do list button would be the first one. And maybe this one, instead of to-do list, this is kind of not very well, not, not named very well. Maybe I have to-do list item. So now I have a to-do list button, a to-do list item, and they're in alphabetical order. So that kind of makes it uh, makes a little bit more clear what they do. And maybe you have a third one, I don't know, let's say you have another one and it could be like to-do list color or something. You could even go even more specific with each component of this to-do list. So if this to-do list has like five or six items, keep adding it inside 
they keep naming it with more specificity as Yoan. I think that's a much better way to organize it. All right, so now I have renamed all my components. We have our base components, the ones that are gonna be used in multiple different components that are more presentational. They have the, the name base in front or app in front, or you maybe you wanna put V in front of it. Then you have the footer and header with the, he, the in front because they're probably only used in one place. And then you have these to-do lists which are grouped together by to-do lists. And then as they become more specific, you add more words to it. And that's a much better way of doing things. Now, if you're wondering where I came up with these ideas, I'm actually using, I actually came up to them from the style guide, the official style guide, and it's strongly recommended. So let me just kind of go over them real quickly. First, we talk about single file component file name casing. You definitely want to use kebab casing or Pascal casing, like I mentioned before. You can see here, this is the bad version. This is the good version. Base component names that you, if they're presentational, dumb or pure, maybe use base in front of them instead of just my button. That's what we did, like base or app or V. If they're single instant component names, I'll move my, my head over here. Single instant component, you can see this, you use the in front of it, which is a great way of, of doing it. If it's used once per page, it says. By the way, it might be in multiple different pages, but it's, if it's usually once per page, you put the in front of it. And typically coupled names, like for example, to-do list, to-do list, to list items. If a component makes sense in the context of a single parent component, that relation should be evident in its name. And it, since it's organized alphabetically, it should be next to each other. And by the way, there's also, you can see here, this, this is this component here, to-do list item, to-do list item, to-do list item button. Also, I was gonna mention you can, with these type of buttons, if you look at the official guides, and I'll put a link to this description, it tells you how you actually can change Webpack to have these automatically imported in. So that's kind of a neat little trick right here. So I'm not gonna type this code in, but you can definitely make them global instead of, and import them everywhere. So those are my tips. I actually got this from Ben Hong and also from the style guide. So let me know what you think. Would you name your components this way? I think this makes a whole lot of sense. This is what I've been starting to do. Let me know in the comments below. I appreciate it. Hey, and if you guys like, if you wanna learn Vue, I actually have three different courses on Vue.js. I have a basically a two, uh, Vue 3 course, which will get you up and running in Vue 3 in minutes. I have a Nux course and I have a, an awesome six week like work at your own pace course. I'll put a link in the description below for all three of them and also in the comments. So check them out. I have a lot of view content. Thanks.